Well, hello and welcome to Comfort Legacies with Faye Michelle. Hi, are you doing, Miss Rosie? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for being our guest. So I would like to just start with asking you a few questions. Just tell me about yourself. Okay. Well, um, I'm originally from Colorado, but I'm living in West Texas right now. And I'm the mother of one, a little girl. And I just recently wrote um, my very first children's book. It's called Linus the Troll. Mm -hmm. And um, it's basically about a troll that even though he looks like he's scary because of his natural troll-like characteristics, he's actually very kind. Okay. And that is inspired by? Um, well, I, we, I was telling her the Billy Goat's graph story, and I was just thinking, what if the troll was actually just really misunderstood? He's just eating goats, because we eat goats sometimes. <laughs> so then I was, um, but it's, um, this book is very simple because it's for two to five year olds. So it's, it doesn't really go into any of that stuff. It just kind of um, compares the characteristics of the troll to his um, his hobbies and what he likes to do. And um, so he, he knits and he listens to harp music. So. <laughs> oh, that's a good, maybe we're going to have you to read some of it or the whole entire thing if you like. So tell me, did you self publish or did you um, go through a traditional literary house? I self published. Okay. I, and what was that experience like? Um, a little intimidating at first. I never considered the traditional route just because I, I like to have control over everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about that, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, so I self published. It was a little intimidating because it's just you don't know where to start sometimes. But um, I went through Amazon and then I also have it on Ingram Sparks. That way it can be distributed to libraries and schools and retailers. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's definitely been a learning curve, but I think I figured it out now. <laughs> Can't you distribute that way on Amazon? as well rather than you can but some of the libraries prefer the ipages which is um part of the ingram sparks okay what what are the ipages i i'm not familiar with that. ipages it's um a distribution um company and it's the way that the libraries purchase their books oh okay i i did not know that i knew about the Library of Congress and getting your PNC codes and things like that. So I wasn't, um, I didn't know that, you know, they preferred Ingram Sparks. Well, I'm not sure if all of them do, but my local library did tell me to go through iPages so that they could purchase the book. Oh, okay. No, that that's, that's good to know. That's good to know. So what were some of your hurdles while publishing? <laughs> um, getting over the fear of it and just putting myself out there. That was one of the very first hurdles. And then um, just trying to figure out the Ingram Sparks website um, and trying mm. to navigate through that and how to upload it with their template. It has to be very specific um, as far as getting the cover correctly. So that was a, that was a challenge. Oh, okay. Okay. And what do you feel about Amazon? Amazon is easy. It's so easy to just upload it, and then it, and their customer support is fantastic. Um, so that that has been a very good experience. I know that Ingram, you can get your hard covers through them, although it's ex more expensive than perhaps um, just getting someone to print your copies for you. But they do offer that um, yes. service. Yes. Yeah. I did um, the paperback through Amazon, and then the I also did paperback through Ingram and hardcover, and then I also printed. I did the offset printing through Bookmasters, just so I could have some physical copies um, that I could sell to the retailers, wholesale to the retailers in my area. 
Oh, okay. So how is that going for you? Um, your the sales of your book and how you promote because that's one of the most um, the questions that I get the most for. How do I market? That's yes, that's very difficult. Um, well, it's been going pretty well because I just have a community of women that support me. So they have been purchasing my book <laughs> and sharing. And so that helps a lot. But then I also um, contacted my retailers. I looked for, since it's a children's book, I looked for children's boutiques in my area um, and just sent them an email and said, hey, I have this book. And, um, there was some interest there from a, a couple of the, the retailers. So um, they wanted to schedule story times and we're tr still trying to navigate that with COVID and how to do it safely for everybody. But um, I've had some success there. And then um, there's a pottery store here in town um, and they do story times and then they paint um, little things that go along with the, the story. So we're going to try to figure out how to coordinate a story time where they can paint a troll. Oh, that is awesome. You know, I, not, I had not thought about the boutiques. That is really, you know, um, something that a lot of the authors could probably consider. I know the schools, have you been into the schools? No, um, not, well. I know you haven't been since COVID, but you know. Um, so one of my friends is a teacher and she wrote, she read the story to the students and then they all sent me. <laughs> yes, I saw it. that. So yeah. that's, that's been my only um, experience with schools so far, but I am hoping to go, go into schools a little bit more. I'm trying to get everything settled with Ingram Sparks with everything uploaded. And then once I do, I'll, I'll be able to reach out to more schools in my area. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit more about, you said your women's group that you, that is very supportive to you. They're my church family. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, okay. So, so that kind of does that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the, just friends um, from my church that are very, very supportive. Okay. So did you try to build a, let's say, an email list or, um, you know, a support system? Everybody recommends that, but I haven't gone that way yet. When did you publish your book? About a month ago. Oh, okay. So it's relatively new. Yes. And, uh, so what about your, um, do you have a website? No, not yet. I have the my author page set up on Amazon, and I have my Facebook, and I have um, uh, Instagram, and that's that's it for now. And Instagram, I, yeah, that's a lot. You know, um, mm -hmm. how's Instagram? Because I am I'm on Instagram, but um, I spend so much time in the face group. You know, talking with people, and I'm on um, what's the other one? TikTok, but I don't get a chance to get around all the time because you have to choose a medium at, at some point, the one that you're going to spend the most time in because, yeah. you know, so I, I'll go weeks without going to TikTok or and then I'll go, you know, I don't know how long without going to Emma, <laughs> the Instagram, but I usually gravitate back to Facebook because it's more comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. So which one do you find? I'm more comfortable with Instagram than anything else. I, I have um, noticed that other authors do use TikTok, but I'm, I haven't even opened TikTok. I have no idea how to use it. So <laughs> I, that's probably a good thing to look into in the future. Um, I've posted my book on Pinterest, but haven't gotten a lot of um, response from that yet, but hopefully mm -hmm. in the future. I was just trying to build as much as a web presence as I could for myself. Um, but yeah, I do gravitate towards Instagram the most. I, I feel like that's where I get the most feedback. So I kind of get back to, to Facebook, but I, I think I like the profile, the way it's set up. And I learned so much from being on there is just that I have not used it as much in the past. And so I'm not that comfortable with it. So I probably should spend more time there, which is, yeah. No, I, I just prefer it. Um, 
one of the things I read whenever I was doing my research for the marketing is that um, you have a bigger response on your marketing if you do selfies or if you do some sort of video. And so I, I just feel like Instagram is a really good place to do that kind of content. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Facebook is kind of, it's mellow. People get a chance to, you know, take their time, get back to, you You know, you can respond. I can see it. It pops up um, on my feed. And so I'm just a little bit more comfortable there. So, yeah. And um, so tell me about your illustrations. How did you come up with your illustrations? Well, I just kind of had a vision of what my troll was going to look like. And then how I found my illustrator is I looked for um, other independently published books on Amazon. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page on Amazon, it shows publishing um, and it shows who they used for their illustrators. And so I just found a company that I liked um, when I went through their portfolio. So I found a book first that was independently, independently published. And then um, through that, found the, the illustrator and then did a little bit of research on them through Trustpilot. And then once I felt comfortable with them, um, it was very awesome to see what I had in my head come out onto paper. Um, what I did, what I very crudely drew out my character, um, and I'm not an artist, so it was like stick figures, <laughs> like a big head. <laughs> yes. But um, they really nailed what my vision was. Wow, that is really good. How much um, interaction did you have going back and forth or revisions? How was that? Well, so my illustrator is actually in Eastern Europe. So there was a lot of their emails, is how we communicated. And um, I think I only had like two or three little things that I wanted to fix. So um, it was it was a very easy process. For me, um, I, my illustrator was fantastic about being responsive whenever I had questions and just so reliable. So um, that was a really, really good experience for me. <laughs> wow, that is really great. Did you have all of your illustrations in your head uh, written out all at once or did you come up with the Gradually. I submitted the entire storyboard to the illustrator that was drawn out. And it's um, it's a pretty short little book, so it wasn't too bad. But my book is like 36 pages, and then there's oh. the bonus activity pages. So, But um, I submitted all of that at once. Oh, okay. So you have activity pages on the end of the book? Yes, I have a maze, um, and there's a coloring page, and there's finger puppets. Oh, okay. That is very nice. So I think what you can do up to about 40 pages for a children's book are, well, I guess you can do as many as you like, but before the price really starts to change. I'm not sure about that, but I do know that you have to do at least more than 32 for it to look correct on when you print it with a hardcover, because if you have mm. less than 32, the illustrator explained to me that the book almost looks like it's not finished. It looks very flimsy. And so they always recommend at least 32 pages. Oh, okay. Okay. So I, I didn't know that. But I did know that for paper, they want at least 24 pages. So that's a pretty good um, increase amount of pages. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the reasons why I did the bonus pages was because just so that it would look right when it's bound um, in the hardcover, but um, at least 32. And if you do pay, uh, paperback, you don't have to do 32, but um, if you're wanting to go the hardcover route. KDP for my book was um, around the 360, um, but Ingram Sparks is much more expensive. Yes, Ingram Sparks is like uh, what seven, eight dollars to do a hard copy. Um, my book is nine dollars and twelve cents to print. Yeah, yeah, nine. So, what are your books going for on Amazon? The book goes on Amazon for twelve ninety nine. Twelve ninety nine, and it's then crazy. what do you? So, on Ingram Sparks, how much are they for your hard copies? The hard copies uh, retail is twenty five ninety nine. Twenty five ninety nine. So that platform 
Um, so Ingram Sparks has their own platform, kind of like a, a KDP. And see, I'm just starting to get going with Ingram Sparks, so I'm not that comfortable going explaining that much about it because I'm still learning. Um, yes. Um, basically, I just uploaded it, and then they handle the distribution. Um, okay. I need to be the one that contacts the retailers and tries to get them to um, like or purchase my book or, you know, just try to push it. But um, then uh, Ingram Sparks can handle the rest. <laughs> okay. So do they have like an Amazon platform, like a, um, I don't know, like when you Google Google Ingram Sparks or, you know, they have uh, not a book for shelf? the general public, but for libraries and schools and um, retailers of that sort. Yes, they, they have like a catalog. Oh, okay. Got you. So you're kind of forced to um, do Ingram Sparks if you're going to go into the schools. And, but that means you have to raise your prices. Now, does that mean that you have hard copies and soft copies with Ingram Sparks? I do have the hard copies and the soft copies, but my soft copies I'm going to keep at um, the twelve ninety nine for the retail. Okay, and it's just the hard copies that have to be more. Oh, okay. So that's that's reasonable. They can still um, order books, and I, I was thinking of more of a mass distribution, like when you're going into the schools and they can purchase books for their students. Um, so I thought at $25, that's probably going to be kind of tough, but yeah. Um, that's one of the things when you are trying to get into a retailer, you have to offer a 55% discount for the wholesale, like Barnes and Nobles, they will not consider purchasing a book unless it has that discount. So, um, they do get that discount, um, and it's enabled on Ingram Sparks. Um, so that, that's why the retail price has to be so much more. Okay. So they have to, I did not know that about Barnes and Noble because when you're dealing with Amazon, your books could be, it could possibly be in Barnes and Noble. But what I do know about Amazon is that even if they give the discount, they will still give you the same royalty. So let's say if your books were being sold at Barnes and Noble through Amazon and you had it for $20, um, they may give Barnes and Noble that cut, you know, 50%, but you would still get whatever royalties you were going to be getting um, initially. Well, so, that's good to know. Yeah. So yeah, that's if you are distributing through Ingram Sparks, you cannot also distribute through KDP. It has to be one or the other just because of the ISBN number. Um, so that was something I learned the hard way because I had enabled it on Amazon to be the expanded distribution. And then when I tried to upload the ISBN onto Ingram Sparks, it was like recognized as it was already in use. So then I had to transfer the rights for the expanded distribution from Amazon to um, Ingram Sparks. And that was a little bit of a process. So that was something I learned. But I think that for the expanded distribution, it, it's better to be on Ingram Sparks because they do um, so many other uh, companies and like uh, the libraries are able to purchase through them where they can't through it. KDP. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, but I thought that if you decide to go both because there's draft to digital, right? Yes. There's a draft to draft to digital. And I think that they cover all of them. But I thought that all you would have to do would perhaps buy another ISBN number or different one for, is that possible? I have the same ISBN number for my paperback through um, Amazon and, and Ingram Sparks, but I have a different ISBN for my hardcover. So um, the hardcover, if I do an ebook, those all both have to be different ISBN numbers. Okay. Okay. Amazon will give you everything that you need. I purchased my ISBNs through Boker. Right. Okay. And, um, so I didn't use the free ISBNs that Amazon or, or um, Ingram offered. And so 
That way I own it and it's mine. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I got you. Um, that really, now when you do that route, do you also have to embed the barcode for the price in, in, the, um, in that process or does that happen automatically when you upload your book? You could um, purchase a barcode separately if you wanted through um, Bokers, um, but it's an extra $25 and it was explained to me that it's not actually necessary. It's, it's just optional. Okay. So when they run your, um, when they scan your book, will the price automatically show up in that scan? It does without not the barcode. Am, like when on the back of this, it does not have the price. Okay. So okay. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Yes. I, I, I think that, um, hmm. yeah, I think you're right. I think that you have to add that barcode for it and maybe it's a separate I'll probably try to do that again the the next time I just didn't want anything to hold me up while I was doing it so mm -hmm. I just went straight through and I was like okay and they offered so many different options when it came to the barcodes and the you get two barcodes and one ISBN or two ISBN and one barcode four hundred dollars for this or a hundred dollars for that and they had too many packages for me I was like I'm just going the easy route <laughs> I'll just go straight through Amazon and just, you know, let them do whatever they have to do and, and work at it that way. But yeah. I bought the 10 pack on um, Bokers because um, the ten, it was the 10 pack. Yes. Yes. You can either get one for $125 or you can get 10 for two ninety five, and they don't expire. And then, like I said, since you have to have one ISBN for your hardcover and one one a different ISBN number for your paperback. It made sense to have the bulk option because um, I do plan to have a whole series of of Linus books. So then, yes, the ISBNs will come in handy. Yes, yes, it it made sense. It definitely makes it. It made sense for me at the moment. I just didn't want to think about it. I just, I, I just it was just too easy to push that button in Amazon. Just push it and let it go, you know? So, yeah. So what was it like? This is always my fun question. When you got that book in your hands for the first time. It was an awesome feeling. I kind of cried a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Just, oh my goodness. Just seeing it the first time. It was just such a good feeling. <laughs> what was your family and friends thoughts? And well, um, it's hard to say because I've been so isolated with COVID. I've just been in my little bubble. So they haven't gotten to see it like in person yet, but, um, I feel like everybody's really proud of me. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Now your sister writes books. So, um, did she start before and you kind of follow along or how did that all happen together? We have always both kind of um, worked on, like as far as back as I can remember, at least since I was 13, mm -hmm. we've you know, written stories and um, shared that with each other. So um, I'm not sure who got started. She's older than I am, so maybe she got started on it before I did. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. okay. it's just always been something we both enjoyed. Okay, that's awesome. That's, that I was like, oh, two sisters, that must be fun because um, I was asking you about your family because sometimes when you're venturing off into these areas of authortude, um, people don't quite get it or, you know, they don't, they don't share the same ambitions. They're always happy for you or whatnot, but I tend to be so excited when I, when I meet someone who's an author, you know, we kind of just share that um, commonality and it's very exciting because, and I love to ask the question, what was it like to get that book in your hand? Because it's almost like a birthing, you know, and um, it's your baby and you get to see your words and you get to touch your words and you get to just, I mean, it's unbelievable. I smile when I see them smile, you know, and they say, yeah. And most people say, it was magical. <laughs> and so I get that a lot, magic. Yes. <laughs> and it does feel pretty magical. Nice. Just overwhelming happiness is how I felt. <laughs> yes, like, yes. I have always just dreamt of being a, a 
published author and I just never really thought that it was going to happen. And then, um, I don't know, I just went for it. <laughs> wow. So parting words, what would you suggest to an aspiring author? Um, some of your maybe pitfalls or some to do's or not to do. Do a lot of research um, whenever you're planning on figuring out how to distribute it, like whether you choose Ingram or Lulu's or Blur. Mm. I think it's one of, you know, um, things like do they offer the retailer discount that the retailers want if that's an, the route you want to go if you want wide distribution on it. Um, because I think that Lulu's does not offer that 55% discount. And so if you're wanting to get into the big, bigger companies, you need to make sure that that's something that's available. Um, um, try to learn from other auth authors as much as you can. I joined a lot of Facebook groups that was geared towards authors and they have been so helpful to me. I took a class on, um, it was called at home authors and uh -huh. all that runs it is, was in one of my Facebook groups. And that was so helpful because it was like a step-by-step -step guide on how to get on both um, KVP and Ingram source. And that's when I realized that I could do both. Um, so just try to learn as much as you can from other authors. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate having you, Miss Rosie. And I'm so thankful that you joined our platform. And we will, we have this, um, I was going to say sisterhood, but we have this authorhood now. <laughs> and uh, we, we're kind of connected now. And that's exactly what the platform is all about, is providing a space for authors, publishers, illustrators, all of us that are into this creative space of doing books. When I first did the book, I just felt like, what do I do now? Yeah. You know, it's, it's overwhelming. Yes. You know what to do. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> no, you don't know what you don't know. And you're looking for ways in, and there's a lot of people that you can reach out to. So I feel like this platform offers you an opportunity to get to know people on a personal level, um, or, kind of tangible rather than on the flat screen mm -hmm. and putting words on a page, you know, <laughs> and I'm really surprised to find out that so many authors are very shy. Yeah. Introverts. Yeah. So. Very, very shy. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, I would do it. I mean, I had a lady in Dubai who's an illustrator and she's all over Facebook and she set up to do an appointment. And then she's, she's like, I'm not sure. I'm shy. I don't want to go. So I was like, okay, yeah, I get that. And, and I would be that way also, but I'm so in love with this platform and, and the authors and, and what they do until it overpowers my fear or, you know, whatever shyness and what have you. And so I think it's finding something that you're just comfortable in because I never wanted to even do lives um, from my Facebook. And that's what drew me to you. When I saw you in front of the fireplace doing your life and I was like, you know, getting your book, I was like, okay, this, yeah, this, this is probably a good fit <laughs> that she may, she might be interested because, um, you're willing to go that distance to put your, you, you, you put yourself out there already. So now, you know, you want to push your baby out there. And, um, and that's pretty much, you know, how I looked at it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Rosie, for spending your time with us today on Comfort Legacies. And we would love to have you back again. So. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. See you again.